decided to make this video today to discuss ALS and those of us that are newly diagnosed with ALS. I was diagnosed with ALS on August uh, 2019. Um, discussing my symptoms, <sighs> it I started having cramps in my early 20s, um, legs. I always thought that it was the fact that um, I walked a lot, I was a night nurse, <laughs> and um, with my diet, probably not taking enough magnesium, and that's what my doctor told me at that time. Um, wasn't really bothered about it, but I always had to be careful if I got dehydrated, I'd have more cramps. I can think about it. Last year, 2018 or 2017, um, I've always had a lot of cramps. Um, I, sorry for the cats playing in the back. <laughs> Um, I was driving one time home from work and I had a Charlie horse in my abdomen. Try to stay straight driving like that. Very difficult. I did make it. Uh, I, my father had a related disorder called FTD, frontal temporal lobe dementia. He also had symptoms of ALS, motor neuron disease. Uh, my uncle, um, his brother, was diagnosed with ALS. Both of them, my father died in 2010 when the te genetic testing was not um, known for um, FTD at his type. My uncle died the week before he was going to have um, testing done. I had decided I watched on Facebook um, and during my father's disease, I always held hope with the University of Pennsylvania's program for FTD. I joined a uh, national, uh, through the in National Institute of Health, I joined the um, Artful and the LEFFTDS studies, um, went in, had MRIs multiple ways, had neuropsychological testing, um, went, lumbar puncture, I did genetic testing at that point. Not just to... Not that I would ever have thought that I would ever develop um, ALS. It wasn't something that I really thought about. You know, if you get cramps um, living in Texas where it's hot, more likely it is to be because you're dehydrated. If you have health anxiety, I do not want you to take my story and put that on yourself. Please understand, most people have cramps that are benign, meaning they don't cause any trouble and they're not related to ALS. Dr. Google is not always correct. So bear in mind, the testing that is done will tell you if you have the true disease or not. So when you get the answer that you don't, please don't suffer and try to worry that you actually have this. Those of us that have this, this is my story of it. Um, did the testing last year for the artful study, Not nothing big, went back to my normal life. Um, in May of this year, um, I noticed that my ankles were getting really stiff. It became harder to walk down the stairs you see behind me. Just thought, hmm, I'm in my 40s. Am I getting arthritis? Didn't think anything serious about it. Um, I noticed that I was having cramps in my neck, um, which is really strange. Um, thought, well, uh, maybe I'm not drinking enough. Um, had pain with the cramp, and I thought, well, maybe that's... Um, related to my heart. I, after my youngest child was born, had a heart condition after that. I am well from it. <laughs> Poor baby, I almost died when she was born and now, you know, she's seven and I have a terminal disease, so. Um, anyway, so the, the stiff ankles, strange cramps in new places. I noticed when I was driving, my tongue would uh, feel like it was moving in my mouth. What I just showed you was tongue vacillations. That's what they were diagnosed. Um, I woke up one morning and my gait had changed. With my family history, I was worried about it. I went to my PCP and um, he did some basic neurological testing, reflexes, such. My left side, um, my left hand and leg um, showed some deficits. He ordered an MRI, which, my lord, I have had so many MRIs. 
The nice thing about being in the civilian world when you have an MRI, they put little earphones on you. You can just choose what kind of music you listen to. Um, so I went to the MRI the day after. Uh, I went out to see him in um, June 30th was when I got my appointment. And within that week, I got the um, MRI with and without contrast. The MRI um, was done and I was, it showed mild age-related atrophy of the frontal lobe, which knowing my family history, that kind of scared me. Uh, my doctor um, put, sent me to a neurologist. I made the appointment with the neurologist and of course, you know, it takes time. Um, I finally had my neurology appointment um, in late August. I discussed my story with um, and my symptoms with my neurologist and uh, bless him he hugged me and he asked me if I knew he I knew what he, I was telling him and I said yes sir I do I had neurology testing which shows that I have deficits um, I don't have good balance if I it is um, one of those things <sighs> he went through my MRI with me and um, with the family history, you know, that's a very concern because I do have some atrophy in the frontal lobe. Um, my temporal lobes are intact now. But when he went through the view going down through my brain, my base of my brain is atrophy. I have upper neuron disease symptoms. Um, I was scheduled for um, a nerve conduction test. During this whole time, I have um, my oldest daughter was engaged and um, is now married. The day after, I had my neurology appointment and he showed me the brain issues and talked about the symptoms and um, I threw the baby or the bridal shower. And I did not want any of my disease symptoms or this to interfere with my daughter's experience of her wedding. Uh, my daughter Summer and my new son-in-law Justin deserved to have and did the most normal wedding process they could. I had the nerve conduction test the Tuesday after the bridal shower. Tell you what, my best friend helped me throw that shower. I owe the world to her because I don't think I could have done that the whole time. It was nice to have something to focus on while I was experiencing these symptoms, not to go mad. And think about them all the time. I had the um, nerve conduction test that following Tuesday and my left shoulder and uh, my left hand are um, that show weakness. Um, I had the needles in the left leg because I'm predominantly left um, sided um, weakness and symptoms on the left side. Everywhere the needle went and hurt wasn't affected. Everywhere the needle went and um, didn't hurt showed that there was already atrophy there. So I was told that I had um, ALS, primary upper motor uh, neuron uh, presentation at this time. Um, I have a prognosis of one to three years. I was sent for genetic testing uh, the genetic testing came back positive. Um, with my family history, you know, it wouldn't be surprised. So during this time, um, my husband was very supportive. Um, I have a very good friend. Thank you, Ray. He was very supportive. Um, I, it has taking some of the people that I'm closest to a harder time because no one wants to face a terminal illness. Believe me, I didn't want to be right about the symptoms that I was having. Unfortunately, it ends up it was right. I had the genetic testing um, results the, the Tuesday after my daughter's wedding and um, Knowing that I got that diagnosis of ALS, uh, presumptive, and uh, I think it's big up in this family history, they say I have FTD, but I'm not currently showing any of those symptoms. I'm, my neuropsychological testing, I believe, was normal. 
Um, I have emotions. I can tell differences. Though that scares me because of my... Um, who are you going to know? Is the person with dementia going to know that they have dementia? It's a question. Uh, I don't know if they would necessarily have the insight to it. With my job, um, I was having harder times using my hands to do things. You never think about it when you start losing function. You can use one hand for one thing, another hand for another thing. Um, doing simple procedures as a nurse became more difficult. Uh, I was having balance problems. And with being diagnosed with dementia, I didn't want to put my patients or their families through that, or my coworkers. Um, previous to this, I was a hospice nurse, so um, that's one of those times in life you don't want to cause any problems because that's going to be something that people will always remember. Uh, when I, after the wedding, uh, which I had, you know, my daughter wanted me to wear heels, and with my wonky gait, it was like, oh, but I didn't want to put that on her and have the pressure of that being on her for her wedding. <laughs> So we found the dress, and uh, thank goodness DSW had some great navy boots to go with it. So I was able to find boots. I find things that wrap around uh, my ankle um, and provide support on my left side are very important. Um, it makes me be able to walk much easier. I'm waiting for my physical therapy um, to get approved now, so I probably will end up with a brace and um, using the cane while my hand still works. Um, so went to the geneticist um, appointment and I was positive for the C9 or 72 gene, uh, full mut mutation, which confirmed the diagnosis of ALS. It's wild. I'm 45 years old. I didn't expect to develop this. Uh, being a nurse, I know what my future is. Um, I will always hold my sister, both sisters. One sister came for the wedding um, uh, pre-help pre um, from North Dakota, and I couldn't have done it without her. My other sister, who lives here in the town I live in, or near me, um, has been such a, a strong supporter. Um, I went to a meditation um, retreat the day after diagnosis. It's a good idea. Um, things like meditation, things like, you know, gratitude and mindfulness really do help while you're dealing with the realization that you have a terminal disease. No two people are exactly alike. No two people will actually deal with this stressor or families will, act, will be exactly alike. My journey has been I have a strong faith. I'm comfortable with my mortality, which, you know, I think anybody should um, think about the end of life before that happens, so it's not so fearful. Um, Stephen Levine wrote a book called A Year to Live, which is a book of meditations that you can take a year through to think about um, your inevitable death. I, that sounds terrible, but it's not. Um, it's very freeing. So I've been meditating. Um, I'm waiting to get into some clinical trials. Uh, in 2020, there may be some clinical trials. Um, I am on, uh, joined the bio registry for the um, CDC's National ALS Registry. Uh, fortunately, this disease is rare, and um, there's not a, there's more known about it due to the ice bucket challenge to raise money to, for a rare disease. Um, so there is hope. But, you know, we're all born um, and we all die. So I know that I may have a shorter time. Um, it's what happens, you know. My point is making sure that I um, eat well, I get the rest. Um, there's some different videos on YouTube that uh, talk about different people going through and how they do it. Um, Things like oral care, things like uh, making sure that you get the nutrition you need and um, do rest periods are very important. You know, there's a spoon theory. Uh, you only wake up to so many spoons a day. Each activity takes so many spoons. Once you're out of spoons, you're out of energy. That's really true. 
One thing I want to tell you, if you get diagnosed with this, um, not all people will get a dementia related to it. Most ALS patients don't. But there are multiple um, genetic uh, causes that can cause the de um, dementia that comes with ALS. It may take years for that to develop, but you, you have the choice whether you have ALS or you're healthy. It's always a thought. Um, there, there are forms that can help you and your family members um, at the time of diagnosis and afterwards. It's, it's grim, but I felt like I had to get these things done, and once they were done, I could relax. Um, I had my will drawn up. Um, had to change it from the last one. Thankfully, I have a um, sweet person, uh, my friend when I was in college, um, helped me quite a bit with that. Thank you. Um, I had my power of attorney, or durable power of attorney, medical power of attorney, and um, in it's the lovely state of Texas, I have a mental health um, directive power of attorney. Uh, if I ever develop the FTD symptoms and um, I don't want to be classified as a psych patient, and they have too many rights, not that anybody that has a psychological diagnosis is anything wrong with you, um, but, and I don't mean to disrespect anybody that has that, but when you have FTD, later I'll make a video about my father with um, his disease. Having that would have made things a lot easier for us. Um, so I have the durable power of attorneys, the will, my medical power of attorney, and my medical directive. I've talked to my doctors about it, what I want. Um, so I feel like I'm on a good basis. Um, I will probably start some of the medicines in January if I don't get into one of the clinical studies. My neurologist didn't want to start me on them to make me not able to get into the studies. Um, the physical therapy, and I don't think I need speech therapy yet, but I'll probably do physical and occupational therapy starting. Um, they say that when you get ALS, it's really important to get into an ALS center. Um, in large cities, they have the ALS centers. In smaller areas, they may not, but I've noticed that um, there's different sites for getting into the clinical studies. Niels.org um, is one that lists them, but a lot of the studies and to get into them are related to getting connected to the ALS clinics. The um, ALS, um, National ALS Support Group, or Association, sorry, um, have local chapters. I've joined the local chapter here in Texas. Um, and I did that not only for myself, but for my husband. So he has his support. Um, preparing my two children. I have two daughters, one's 27 and one's seven. Mm -hmm. Parenting 2.0. My 27 year old has seen other family members deal with this, so she understands what's going on and it's been very difficult on her. Um, my seven year old knows that for age appropriate, um, I've let her school counselor know and her teachers know. And basically what I've tried to do is all the people around me that will be my caregivers, I've tried to create little circles of caregivers around them. Uh, my husband's best friend and his wife are wonderful people. Um, and his brother and his parents are supporting them. Um, my sister has her husband. My other sister has her husband. Um, you know, my daughter has... My oldest daughter now has her husband and his family, which are wonderful people. So she's got support. I reached out to her father. Here's this. So I raised my daughter, um, my first daughter, high school sweetheart. I basically raised her as a single parent. Um, her father and I were estranged. You know, you have a child young, it's very hard to make sure that you, everything falls into place. Not everybody does that. Um, I asked him um, to be present for her and to be there for her because mm, I think everybody still needs a parent. You know, you can be an adult, uh, an older adult, and you still need that parent. Um, so he just had a heart attack, but thank God he lived. <laughs> Best plans, you never know. I mean, you know, you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. You know, I have ALS, but um, I could be hit by a bus. You, you just don't know. You've got to enjoy each day. And while you have symptoms that are scary, while you're dealing with a scary diagnosis, don't forget to live. Don't forget to have fun. You know, we're going, everybody dies. 
there's time to have joy. You know, I know that my husband has been such a rock for me and he's been very realistic about it. There's not been any denial. And I feel bad for those in my life that have had that problem with denial. You know, everybody has pain and everyone deals with that in a different way, so there's no judgment. But um, if you have ALS, find somebody that really you can talk to, whether that's a professional person or a good family member or a friend, that you can be discuss it. The support groups are great because you can talk to other people going through it. There's online ones, though... Um, You'll see people that have the health anxiety get on them, you know, and that just makes me sad for those people that, you know, worry about a twitch here and there and worry that they're going to die. If you have that kind of anxiety, sometimes you forget to live, <laughs> you know. So we have planned to go to Disneyland. We have plans to go here and there, and I want to make as many memories and take as many pictures as I can for my kids and my husband. Um... You know, it sucks that I have this. I, you know, I really hate the fact that I've been sleeping more. You know, you think that, you know, well, you don't have to work every day. We, no, it's not so fun because there's financial concerns about that. But sleeping my life away is not something I like. So I have to balance my energy and my diet and um, hopefully I'm awake for more times. Um, you know, just every day finding the time whether you pray you meditate you do practice mindfulness gratitude do something that will feed your soul the physical thing experiences you'll have you can observe and when you become immobile you're not going to be able to enjoy the things you are now so while your mind is going crazy thinking, oh my God, I'm dying. This, um, what am I going to do about this? What am I going to do about that? Take a check and make sure you don't forget to live. You know, life has its balances. There's the good parts, the bad parts, the scary parts, the safe parts. You know, nobody's guaranteed anything. You know, that's something that's, you know, I think the thing that I found is um, kind of a harsh reality is... Um, there's no set, you know, impermanence is the only permanent thing. So this moment, gone. Next moment, gone. You can't think about the past. You can't think about the future. You can prepare for the future and make sure you have all your advanced directives. Uh, make sure you're looking into the equipment that you may need, um, caregiving services or what you may want to do, whether you want to have a feeding tube, whether you want to have a trach, uh, whether you want to stay at home, how much are the caregivers going to be, who's going to be the person that you dex and think to make the decisions for you, um, you know, wheelchairs, um, you know, all those different things that you may go through. Making those plans are important, but you can't look to the future about, you know, when you're going to take your last breath the desperate symptoms you may experience. You know, that will come, knowing, giving yourself the education of what will happen, but focus on today, focus on now, focus on the people that love you, that are around you. You know, this is the time to make the memories you want. This is the time to um, tell people you love them. I've reached out to past relationships, you know, um, people that I've loved, and, um, you know, I've told them what's going on and um, said goodbye, and I am so loved. You know, it's like, it's kind of nice to make that peace. So, um, you know, that's just my advice. You know, <sighs> life is hard. It can be great. It can be sad. It can be happy. You just got to live, you know. Well, I hope that helps. Um, I'll try to make some more videos, but... If you're out there and you watch this, I hope you have a good day, night, afternoon, weekend. Stay strong.